So if we look right here at, uh, at the stator, uh, this is something that I really do like. You've got um, hairpin design, U-shaped hairpin design. So yeah, I've got a weld on this side, but on the other side, all I've got is the braiding, which, yep. uh, which I'm, you know, I'm kind of excited about. This is a, yep. this is a, this is a. Pull it over. Yes, a, yeah, a little <laughs> bit more. Yeah. So here then we've you got. Just, you'll pick that up with one arm. Come on. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, next. <laughs> okay. So why didn't you make this out of aluminum? We could go there, but I don't want <laughs> Anyways, at the end of the day, um, this is a, this, I, I've, you probably heard me commenting about um, mm. Lucid's motor. Uh, I really, mm. really like that one. But this is superior to the most of, actually, all but one other company um, uh, uh, when it comes to the hairpin design. So I'm very impressed with this. I, I think you've done a fam fantastic job there. And actually, while we're standing here, part of that too is how, it's, with this. how we automate that and allow that to happen, you know, the bend radius and how it's inserted, as you pointed out, into the theater and, and the, and the uh, offset between them yeah. to make that really easy to do. Well, here's the other thing that I like. Uh, your resolver here. Um, mm -hmm. This one is bigger than the other one, but mm -hmm. it's still smaller than anybody else's. And mm -hmm. uh, and this was uh, this was a big thing that we noticed on the when we tore apart the other Rivian. So this this is kind of cool as as well. Um, you seem to be able to do with your small revolver what other people are struggling with with a larger one. So that's uh, that's another uh, good thing. I think I'm going to just leave this over here from now on. <clears throat> but but I I I will tell you I. I am pleased that I'm glad that I got a chance to get this thing and look at it. And there are some really cool ideas, but mm -hmm. really and truly uh, the thing that I'm the most impressed with is the decoupler. Yeah. So, and you'll notice it's up here in the front where I was yeah. supposed to be. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're very happy about that. Um, the, we looked at... Uh, uh, all the advantages, you know, uh, gives me a neutral, um, mm -hmm. uh, towing. I, I can tow this now in back of an RV. If I have a big uh, mechanical RV, put it through a car wash. Mm -hmm. A lot of people uh, that we talk to that are in the, um, you know, mm -hmm. they fix crashes and stuff like that. They like the idea, they will like the idea that they can tow this thing by putting it into neutral or whatever you want to call it. And, um, and, and quite frankly, uh, they, they just, I mean, it, nobody else that I know of has got anything quite like this. And yeah. I think, I think this is a really good idea. I think this is something that I'd like to have you elaborate on a bit. Yeah. It's, I mean, we spent a lot of time on this. I'm, I'm actually glad you bring it up. So the, on the, on the rear driving that we were able to disconnect. Um, and what that does for us is when on, on, the launch configuration we have that as well except it's as you know it's a manual disconnect so you go into what we call yeah, conserve right. mode right and it, it disconnects the rear, rear drive axle uh whereas in this it's dynamic it's and it's a right. based right. upon the drive mode you're in but when you're in all-purpose drive mode which is like the primary drive mode that's used um yeah. the rear driving is connecting disconnecting depending on torque request depending on speed and it's a it's a way for us to get to the efficiency of having only one of the permanent magnet mach machines the front drive unit you know, engaged and the others not engaged, you're not creating any uh, parasitic loads or losses just from spinning it, uh, which is really, you know, which is really powerful, uh, which is great to have. Now to do that, it means the technical requirements for that disconnect are really high. It has to be able to disconnect very rapidly. It needs to be able to do it very often. Uh, so from a durability point of view on a given drive, you're going to be connecting, disconnecting quite often. Um, and it needs to be seamless where, you know, you and I enjoy the fact that this is happening from a technical point of view, but from a consumer point of view, uh, you don't even want to know it's there. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of work went into the the minimizing the amount of time it takes to connect and disconnect uh, the the drive unit, and then making sure that when it reconnects, it's not this sudden sort of hit you in the back kind of feel like you know you yeah. don't want it to feel like it's all of a sudden coming in. So the the way in which the torque curve the torque once it's reconnected the torque reengages was something, um, you know, our engineers spent a lot of time 
in the vehicle with laptops tuning. I spent some time doing it as well. Um, and it's, I, I think we've ended up with something that's really wonderful. We're, we're really happy with it. And of course you're, you're doing this, you're creating a mechanical connection, but we're using, uh, you know, we have to like do that very smoothly as we disconnect as well. So you don't hear any clunk. Yeah. So we've, as we went through the development process late in the process, we were dealing with some like corner cases where you could create under certain conditions, the feeling of it, you could like perceive something happening in the back. And we really worked all that out through the, the software and through the, through the controls. Well, uh, I normally don't care much for springs. Um, this though, I, I, we talked about it and I would like to say that, you know, maybe there's some sort of a, uh, electromechanical movement that we could make, but if we did that, it, it would clunk. So I guess, uh, you can't get rid of springs everywhere. But let me let me think about one other thing that you seem to be moving away from, and that's carborundum or silicon carbide. Um, mm -hmm. We noticed that you moved from the Danfoss to the Infineon 3-pack. Want to yeah. comment on that? Is that from just, I assume it's just from a cost standpoint. I love how thorough you are. Um, uh, yeah, so when we think about the driving, you know, we, we've talked about this before, one of the big constraints we had in 2022 for production was power modules. And um, in the case of our, our existing quad, we have a, a Danfoss power module that uses either silicon or sil silicon IGBT or silicon carbide. And what we have um, what we launched with was we had silicon carbide in the front drive unit and silicon IGBT in the rear. And we, the supply chain just wasn't robust or large enough uh, to support our ramp. Uh, and we felt that acutely with our production volume. So with the bring up of this drive unit, the Enduro drive unit, we really put a lot of effort into making sure the supply chain was robust and such that we would could have both silicon carbide uh, with an Infineon, uh, with Infineon power semi, uh, as well as silicon IGBT. And as you point out, um, you know, we're using a silicon IGBT in the rear drive unit. And, but those, the three pack, those Infineon that you pointed out, you actually showed it earlier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those can either be silicon carbide or silicon, and we have fungibility between the two depending on constraints that exist within the supply chain. So, are you going to put uh, carborundum in the front? And, uh, and yeah, That's exactly right. That's okay, exactly so right. there's a little but, bit of a difference between the two. Uh, the two. Uh, there uh, is slight, slightly different uh, efficiency. Now, one of the things that um, as we fully build out the portfolio of motors across different uh, vehicle combinations, of course, uh, some combinations and the lower price combinations will just use silicon IGBTs front and rear. So that that flexibility is really help, helpful. Uh, so, for example, the same drive unit, or I shouldn't say same, a similar version of this drive unit is used in our commercial vans. And the front drive unit in those applications is just using um, silicon IGBTs uh, and not using silicon carbide because it's it's meaningfully cheaper, as you know. Well, it's meaningfully fixed. Uh, uh, it does change things a little bit. Um, it's a little less efficient, but it's a lot yeah, cheaper. Yeah. 